Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Snookus and this is Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich uh, Legacy of the Veldkrieg and so this is one uh, one of the mods I talked about in my update that I was gonna play and uh, as you can see it's um, it's quite interesting, it's uh, an alter alternative reality mod um, and uh, without going too much into the details essentially the Axis, um, no, well, the Austrian German alliance won, won the First World War, or it became kind of a stalemate, and so a bunch of nations uh, fell to uh, socialist movements, and some, um, like Germany, uh, uh, remained as an empire, and so with Austria, and so on. And uh, anyway, we're gonna get more into it as we go on. I've uh, played a game as the Union of Britain before, so this time we're gonna play as France uh, because I believe they have their focus tree, uh, focus trees done. Um, United States, for example, doesn't have any focus trees yet, and neither does uh, like um, Spain. You can see them here, but um, and so on. But uh, I'm fairly certain that uh, Commune of France do have the focus tree done, so we're gonna play as them. And uh, a bit of a difference here be between uh, the real game and the mod is that uh, there's some difference in politics. N uh, not only are there socialist, fascist and democratic parties and uh, governments, they're also different between those. So you can be, if you're socialist, you can be syndicalist or totalist, which is um, an alter alternative name for um, Stalinism or uh, authoritarian socialism, pretty much. And then you can be a authoritarian Democrat, which is kind of um, the kind of uh, ideology that a constitutional um, monarchy would have, I, I guess. Kind of, at least. Um, and then you have market liberal and um, social liberal and so on. So England, or the Union of Britain, I should say, not England, uh, is radical socialist, while the Commune of France is simply syndicalist. And there are some differences there, which I imagine we're going to go into eventually. And um, also some mechanics have been turned off, but you'll see that as we play, I think. So uh, we have the, fur in the International Congress to demand a social reign. Alright, so we got a bunch of stuff here and we got some history here. I think we're going to get into it more as we play. If you want to, you can pause here and read it, but otherwise we're going to start now. Also, the music is uh, exclusive to this mod here. So let's um, gonna play in regular. We're not gonna play Iron Mode. No, no use playing as historical, I suppose. And then we're gonna play as Commune of France. But something I want to show off before is uh, you see here how uh, French Republic. What essentially happened is that socialists rose up and took control of uh, mainland France, and the French Republic um, ex uh, excused themselves to the overseas territory so the traditional French uh, government is still in power in Africa and in some uh, if they have some more dependencies I don't know and uh, Britain pretty much happened the same except the unions did it here and the just mainstream social movements did it here I believe which is why Union of Britain is pretty much one big uh, syndicalist congress but anyway uh, the British uh, monarchy fled to the to Canada, which then turned into the Dominion of Canada. So Australia and uh, all of the minor, and you can see Australia actually have, have control of New Zealand and stuff. But um, most of the British dependencies have banded together, while the mainland Britain or the original Britain, I suppose, uh, has turned socialist and has cut ties with them. So anyway, uh, we're gonna play a regular. No uh, other stuff turned on. Uh, Sebastian Fiore, Faure is uh, our leader, I suppose. Uh, apparently, um, the German Empire uh, Empire is pretty powerful, and uh, it Italy is um, fractured into two nations here. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Uh, there's a lot to talk about to talk about, so um, we could be going on for a while with that. Ah, it's always nice to start off a new game of Hearts of Iron 4. And especially nice when you are gonna play in a new scenario when which you haven't played 
about a half a dozen times now. So let's uh, check out the focus tree first. So uh, a pretty huge focus tree as you can see here. Um, and I, I haven't played it France before, but I guess you can either go in air focus and navy focus, which I, I believe is just the same as the main game. Uh, this you can't do because I'm, I think this might be time dependent, so this might act activate or become available at a certain time. Uh, this one I suppose is just to develop the army and we could go this way to get some... Okay, now we can't. This uh, symbol confused me for a second, but so it doesn't give us any, um, any free um, manufactories. Uh, I think we should go... Well, the road to war is uh, good as well, I guess. I think this one is a bit more to to uh, excuse me because I can hear I pulled my um, air piece here. Uh, I I believe this one is um, ah give me a second here. Uh, yep yeah. no holy crap ah come on come on you oh, all right anyway um, I believe the road to war is a bit more. Um, to do with when we actually want to expand and want to provoke some war. So for now, that isn't super necessary. Um, maybe we'll um, go that direction later on. First of all, I think we should focus on the, on the economy and decide which kind of socialism we are uh, gonna follow. Seems like either one of these you take, you can always um, check out the other um, focuses after that. So let's go with the direction of the economy first of all, see what that does. We have some free, oh, all of our uh, manufacturers are free here, so let's check. We only need infrared equipment, equipment it seems. Um, what kind of armies do we have if we sort by... Which kind of divisions, I mean, of course. Some navy, some... Um, uh, motorized, some cavalry. Mostly just regular old infantry. So... Uh, we should probably focus on getting... Um, just a bunch of infantry and then also some... Um, some motorized. Uh, tanks, we do have some heavy and light. I think light is probably the... Most reasonable to focus on. Let's focus on fighters uh, to begin with. And then later on we can branch out to other areas. I'm gonna keep one convoy production at all times and then uh, some light destroyers and battleship and also some subs. Let's see, we have um, start off like that. We might uh, work a, l a bit more on it later on when we, we figure out our uh, our needs. Our navy as it stands isn't the greatest, but it's alright. I think <clears throat> if we band together with Britain, we might stand a chance of uh, outclassing everyone else. Okay, anyway, um, some infantry, some support equipment, some ca artillery. And then let's just go down the line. Cool. Uh, research then. We've got a lot of research to do. Um, infantry equipment, always important. Then the usual ones. Speeding up our research and speeding up our industry. And our construction. We've got no divisions basic training right now, but I think that's fine until we've worked off this deficit, which is going to take a couple of months at least, I think. This is a bit of, bit of a weird song right now, but I'm sure that's fine. Um, okay, so as I always do, we should start off with some um, civilian factories. 
just to maximize, maximize our output. Let's build one in every state and then we can move on to military factories. Let's do it like that to begin with. Uh, all right, and the trading needs to be done. We do need um, oil, I imagine, rubber, tungsten, chromium. Uh, the United States, well, actually, let's start with the Netherlands because they're close and they're, defend they're um, easy to uh, defend if we need to. Um, same here with rubber. Then it's tungsten. We can do that from Par Portugal. And then lastly, chromium, right. Let's get that from um, Russia now. Let's go with um, Cuba then, I guess. It's better than have, having to uh, transport it through um, the Baltic Sea here. Uh, so that's that then. Okay, so let's uh, start off a bit slow. Yes, to... Uh, begin here and then let's talk about how the world looks so essentially right thank you the kaiserreich team it's uh, very nice of you to have uh, uh, created this mod so we can play it okay right let's start off with uh, some heavy reading i guess the third republic ended in the way it began defeated by german arms and Facing communist revolution at home in the November of 1919, a revolutionary general strike was called by the CGT. Um, don't know what that stands for. Paralyzing the country and causing the downfall of the bourgeois government. The party of order was not strong enough to put an end to the unrest, and in the following months, the establishment were forced out of France by a coalition of leftist forces in a brief but brutal civil war. For the past 15 years, the self-styled Commune of France has been united behind a common platform of syndicalist socialist consensus headed by a ruling Comet de Salut Public. I guess this is a typo in the mod. It is uh, version 0.2 uh, as it stands so. However, by 1936 the consensus was that was resolved to rebuild the shattered country and defend the fruit of the revolution from foreign menace is deemed as outdated by many critics. And there is a growing call for more radical policies. France is increasingly confident in its security and in its mission. But the French revolutionary tradition is varied and it is unclear precisely which strands shall overcome in the years to come. Interesting. Okay. Um, right, so we got some unfulfilled import requests from... Rub maybe, no. Oil, yep. Well, you can never tr trust the Dutchman, I guess. Um, well, let's go with the US then. Okay, so basically, as you saw, or as you heard be more, um, and there's, there's a bug which I um, encounter occasionally in which um, the flags of the countries are uh, mixed for some reason. But anyway, um, the German Empire uh, and their whole side in the First War basically won against the Commune of France and um, all the other allies except for Britain. Uh, that's because the Americans did, didn't intervene because the Germans didn't authorize attacks on uh, uh, American shipping. So the Americans didn't deem it necessary to intervene. Um, and because of that the German Empire won and the um, Empire still stands with the monarchy there. Um, Oswald Mosley of the Union of Britain has invited the leader of the Sorelians, George Valois, to Birmingham to discuss the common ground between their ideologies. Valois has thanked him for the invite and set off in the name of internationalism, bringing with him as guests the Hungarian exile Tibor Samueli and Matthias Rakosi. Those views are also very much in line with Mosley and Mussolini's. Right, Mussolini in this um, alternative history didn't turn to fascism due to uh, some reason, I, I don't actually know, um, and instead turned to socialism, and that's for some reason, and 
he is pretty much the thinker behind, or one of the great thinkers behind the totalism, which is the alternative version of Stalinism, due to Stalin. Stalin died in the Civil War, by the way. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Have a safe flight. Um, anyway, so uh, the Spanish independent, uh, the Spanish in, uh, Civil War isn't going to happen uh, due to uh, I don't know. I, I can't actually tell you. Uh, we might do a playthrough as Spain when the Focus Tree is done there. Uh, I'm going to read this just by done talking. Anyway, uh, so France lost. Um, Italy got split by a revolution, I guess. The northern part is. Um, uh, let's see here. They are authoritarian, so they basically have um, have a constitutional monarchy as well, I guess. While the southern part is socialist, so if we create, we are in an alliance with them, so we might actually ship over some units uh, already just to uh, secure their existence, pretty much. Um, but Britain, Britain didn't lose the war. Um, Germany and Britain pretty much signed a white peace, and after that happened. Because um, Britain is, uh, Britain's navy was too strong for Germany to overcome. So um, they pretty much signed a white peace and then Brit Brit Britain got overrun by socialists. Okay, uh, the president of the Russian Republic ever since its inception in 1917, Alexander Kerensky, has just been shot and killed while on the way to the Senate. The assailant was taken down by the police, but the goals and the intention of the attacker un are unknown. Um, sorry, just taking a sip there. Uh, despite his massive unpopularity among the Russian people due to botched land reform and ineffective rule, Kerensky was nevertheless able to hold the country together for years, and his death has thrown Russia into chaos. Let's see over here, nothing has happened yet. The senators are already discussing the possible replacement to Kerensky. New coalitions are being formed both between the left and the right, while mil military men like Denkin, Wrangel, and Korniklov, Korniflov are just one step away from intervening to dissolve democracy and save Mother Russia. So let's see if that turns out. It can actually happen, occur, that Russia turns into the Soviet Union, uh, but also that they turn into a monarchy again and stuff like that. They are right now a democracy. Uh, despite the successful organization of the Syndicalist Congress of May, the Pivard administration has been criticized for its lack of reaction against the surviving, uh, surviving, surveying of trade units in Germany. Today, the opposition in the Bourse Generale du Travail uh, agreed to a vote of no confidence against P Pivar, who announced that new elections would be brought forward to elect a new committee. His duty will be temporarily assumed by Comité de Salut Public uh, until the last result. Right, so political power works a bit differently as well. If you have a positive 150 political power, I believe, uh, you have a chance of gaining what it's called a stability, which pretty much makes things better. You get more manpower and stuff. While having a negative of 100 or more, it means you can lose stability. <laughs> and you can be debuffed as a nation, pretty much. So we're gonna get um, a Comité de Salut Public, which grants... Um, Right, which makes us syndicalists. And we get the event election day one, clarifying the communal army. <laughs> so let's see how that works out for us. There, there is some nice music in this uh, mod, although it's a bit um, varying in quality, I suppose. Let's uh, shore up our armies for now. Bye. I mainly want... Uh, yeah, I mainly want infantry. Uh, oh, cool, so we can actually... Yeah, actually, let's look at Germany here. If we go, go into uh, political uh, diplomacy. All right, we, we can't do that, apparently. Um, let's do it like this instead, then. They have a lot of puppets, or subject states. They have... Uh, Flanders Wallonia, which uh, is Belgium, pretty much. They also have um, Kingdom of Lithuania, as you, you can imagine which the, those are. Uh, they have White Ritania, which is his, there. They have Ukraine, which is here, which is there. Um, they have Dutch Middle Africa, which is uh, 
with the victory of um, the first war, they got pretty much they essentially got a lot of uh, overseas dependencies from other nations, um, and they also have uh, Crete. Yeah, they have Crete as a didn't know that, and a, and a bunch of other stuff. So they pretty much have a good stranglehold on uh, Middle and Eastern Europe here. All right, election day one, clarifying the communal army. Due to the presence of trade unions within the communard army, it has become overly politicized, creating tensions within the guarantor of national integrity and the arm of the syndicalist revolution. The French syndicalist military leaders, mostly Sorelians, decided to ask the soldiers who they want to lead the French army before definitely dissolving the military trade unions. Okay, so we can either go, go with a tank proponent, centralized high command, so we can go syndicalist, totalist, totalist, or radical socialists. Um, you know what? We have a pretty, pretty huge um, manpower uh, bank anyway, so no need to go mass conscription, I think. And I actually went radical socialist last time with Union of Britain, so let's go. And I don't want to go Stalinist. We might do that in another playthrough. So let's go with the tanks. Which are always fun. Um, we will lose some popular political power, but that's all right, I think. Um, and it would pretty much put the socialists in power. And if we go here, we also gain some factories. Seems like the best um, together with the cooperatives. Right, election day two. The Jean Sagnement General, Genera, uh, sorry, I really don't know how to pronounce French words. Due to its key purpose over external and internal matters, the position of director of the committee, Comité de Rassagnement General, 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 uh, whatever, is one of the keys to the supreme power of the Commune of France. And for the destruction of the political rivals, it could be a, ter a terrible weapon in the hands of one of the extreme extremist factions, Jacobins or Sorelians. All right, so I don't know why Jacobins are totalist, but sure. Sure, let's uh, go all out um, syndicalist. Why not? Uh, so right now the um, travelers, which are the socialists, are the ruling party in a way. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna stop here for the first episode, and hopefully this is something you're interested in, and hopefully it's something you want to see more of. Um, I'm gonna create the content anyway, I'm gonna do at least one playthrough of the mod. Uh, but if you want to see more, please leave a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see this in your inbox, uh, YouTube inbox. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully see you next time. Uh, have a nice day and bye.